Hello and welcome. Today we're going to look at how to use uh, additive and subtractive pipe. We're going to create this very simple object and I'm going to show you how to do it without encountering the topological naming issue in uh, FreeCAD. I'm uh, currently using 0.20 and uh, yeah we're going to have a look at best practices to um, how to use this tool. Let's go. So we will be using these two tools. Subtractive pipe is the main one that we will be using. The idea behind the subtractive pipe is to have a couple of cross sections and have a path and the path defines the broad direction where the cross sections are going and the object will cross the cross sections exactly. So let's start from creating one of the cross sections and I want to create a rectangular cross section going to make it fairly easy but I'm also going to do it in two bits because I want to use both the additive and the subtractive version of this so I'm going to sketch some construction here just to make sure we are drawing a symmetric object And I want to add a couple of dimensions. Let's make it 40 millimeters horizontal and 80 vertical. In this case, the cross section is centered. I'm going to make the next one not center just to show that there isn't a difference. The reason why I'm making sketches first is again to avoid the topological naming issues and instead of uh, just creating surfaces and creating solids first and then cross sections I prefer to do do it this way so the so I want to draw the cross section so let me rename this as starting plane and then create the path on the XZ plane. Again, we're going to need a sketch and I'm going to use a line and then I'm going to use a tangent arc. So an arc that I'm going to make tangent via the constraints. And I want to fully constrain this but this is just to show you what it looks like in space. I want to now make it fully constrained by adding a couple of dimensions and I'm going to use distance and I want this distance to be fixed. Maybe it's a horizontal distance and this is 150. I want the length of the uh, horizontal track to be 80 and I want to then make sure that this point is at a certain angle from the horizontal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a line as a construction and then I want to constrain the angle of that uh, because functionally in this part I'm going to pretend that this is this is the functional dimension is that the angle is 60 degrees. So now we have our path. I can leave the sketch. And I'm going to rename this as path. Now to draw the starting cross section, I want to put myself in that point. So how to do it? So I want to draw a plane that's normal to this edge and coincident to this point and it's actually quite easy so you select a construction plane you select that edge and then normal to edge and that plane is normal to the plane and it's already in the correct position so I'm just going to go okay and we have our sketch plane ready to draw the ending cross section so I'm going to pick up create sketch and I'm going to sketch on this plane just to make sure that we are in the right plane. You see we are uh, we are sketching here. I'm going to set myself perpendicular to the sketch so QP. From here 
this is the intersection so the red point on top and of course I want that point to be within my cross section and I want to draw a rectangular cross section of course not as a construction and I want this to be not centered well I want it to be centered horizontally but not vertically so I can do it this way so turn these two into construction I want I want a point at the intersection of these two to be on the vertical line, so coincident, that makes it symmetric around horizontal. Then I wanted to mention the vertical distance from the horizontal axis. So effectively this distance, I want it to be 12 millimeters. I want the full height to be 40 and I want the full width to be 80. So I made the rectangle larger than, than it's tall in this section and taller than it's larger in the other section. So let's have a look at what it looks like. So there we go. I'm going to hide the construction plane. This is going to be, this is going to be and in plane and we should have everything to create our pipe and to do so we click on additive pipe we use path as a path for the pipe we use then we we'll click then on ok and then we'll get more option so the first thing that it wants you to select is actually not the path but the profile so you can click on object and you can click on starting plane I call it starting plane it was more like starting section path to sweep along is path and you see they are starting to get collected within the feature I want to add another section. So I have to switch here in section transformation to multi-section, add section and then select ending plane. If you now look at the preview you can see it's the cross section is transforming from tall to wide as it goes along the path. So it's kind of straight and tapering up to here and then it gets uh, bent down Click on OK and this is what it looks like. That's our first additive pipe. Then we could show all of these again. And what I want to do now is I want to create a subtractive pipe by uh, applying an offset to these. So if I hide additive pipe, then one of the ways to do this would be to use um, thickness, but thickness is a bit difficult because it, it's going to have to refer to a face that is generated by an operation and this has the possibility to create uh, topological naming issues so what I want to do now is I want to create effectively a new sketch here and project the um, geometry of the old sketch and I want to create another rectangle that is a bit smaller and the uh, constraint I want to apply is the um, the thickness and I want it to be sort of constant so distance is the easiest way to do this and I'm going to call this one mil one mil this is not the best way to do it because I'm repeating the same thing four times we could use a variable but we can't use a variable within the sketch uh, itself because it would cause a circular reference within FreeCAD. We uh, could specify this as a variable outside or in spreadsheet module and then refer to it but for now I'm just going to do it manually. I know it's not best practice so uh, don't do it. This is starting subtractive. My naming is not super consistent today but it works uh, well enough. So uh, 
on this plane, I think, yeah, on this plane, I'm going to sketch. I'm going to grab this geometry with external geometry again. I'm going to draw another rectangle. And uh, just to show you how this works, uh, I can easily use a different thickness here. So I'm going to make this one three millimeters. Uh, possibly a little bit different to manufacture unless you're using 3D printing, but we are in a world where 3D printing exists and maybe there is a functional reason to do this. So uh, what I want to demonstrate is that you can have, you can use this to do a solid that hasn't doesn't have a necessary a uniform thickness. And so in this case, uh, the thickness operation wouldn't necessarily work. And this is ending subtractive. And we can reuse the path. So I'm going to select starting subtractive, create a subtractive pipe from here. And it's using that as a reference. I'm going to use again the same path to sweep along and I'm going to use path. So path has been picked up, but I also want to add another section, which is the ending subtractive section. This is, these have been picked up. Path is the same object that's been replicated in both. It looks like it's being created properly. And I'm going to click OK in the task. And, and this is our section. So we have uh, two volumes. So we have our um, cutout it starts from a tall rectangular cross section and ends into a narrow horizontal cross section. Now, what's the difference between this and additive loft? Well, additive loft doesn't follow a path. So if I were to say hide subtractive pipe, and if I wanted to do the same, but by using loft, what you can do is you can add the starting plane. So I clicked on allow use features so I can choose things from here. I select starting plane and I add ending plane as another section. The result of the operation is a solid that, let me just hide or rather delete these operations. That's what the um, loft looks like. So it doesn't let you specify a path to sweep along. And so if I go back and hide additive loft now and just show the two pipes, this is the, uh, this is the main difference. So to show that the model doesn't break, what I can do is I can go on path and I can change this to maybe a longer section with a shorter uh, arc. And I can change this to a different angle just to show you that everything moves properly. I'm going to close and even without recomputing. So this is borderline tight, but it generated a proper geometry as might have lost tangency. No, it looks it looks good. I can change this to a different larger number and I can make the angle a bit smaller. And the geometry regenerates properly without even having to force a uh, recalculation in uh, in FreeCAD. So yeah, I hope this shows you how to use additive and subtractive pipe in a way that doesn't break if you change uh, dimensions. And uh, I'm not showing all the options in the tools, but I just wanted to give you a quick overview of the tool and what's uh, reasonable good practice on how to use it. Please let me know what you want to see next on the channel and I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time. Thank you.